In this series of short videos, we are looking at how we can use Gateway 2nd Edition to make the most of our remote teaching and learning environment. Teaching online from course books that are designed to be taught face-to-face -face can pose some challenges, but luckily there are many tools readily available for Gateway 2nd Edition such as your online workbook, student book, worksheets, audio files and the grammar presentation videos. In this video we will talk about how you can make the most of the grammar presentation videos by flipping your classroom. Flipping is a form of blended instruction. In the first video we briefly spoke about synchronous learning when we are all online at the same time and asynchronous learning, where students work independently outside the online classroom. When flipping the classroom, students are first exposed to the new concepts or materials outside the online classroom. They meet the new language via a video or independently work their way through set tasks to gain some understanding of the new language in preparation for the practice and production stages that happen in the live online lesson. So before class, students watch a video that introduces and clarifies the target language of the unit for you. So let's have a look at Gateway 2nd Edition B1 Unit 7, where the target language is modal verbs of obligation, prohibition and advice. The flipped classroom presentation videos are a perfect way to start reorganising your content so you can make more effective use of learners' time in the live online lesson. Students can download the flipped classroom worksheet from the Student Resource Centre or you can download the worksheet and send it out per email or upload it on your learning management system for students to access. There is an answer key in the teacher's resource for you. Make sure students can access the grammar presentation video too though before you ask them to experience the teaching of the target language of the video at home, make sure you have addressed the vocabulary and the reading pages of the previous pages in the student book. The reading provides a meaningful context for the target language and some of the previously studied vocabulary is recycled in part one of the worksheet. For part two, students need to watch the video and answer some questions. Again, there is some recycling of lexis, but the main aim is to make students notice the new grammar in context. Students can watch the video as often as they need to to answer the questions, which is an advantage of flipping your classroom. We all learn at different speeds and everybody can prepare independently before the live lesson at their own speed. So when they get to the live lesson, you can group learners straight away to compare their answers in breakout rooms and justify their answers to the exercise in part three. In the whole class feedback stage, make sure you use some concept checking questions to check that learners truly understand the core meaning of the new language. Clarify doubts and check students understand, in this case, what the difference is between should and have to. You might want to ask, for example, for should, is it necessary to do this? No. But is it a good idea to do it? Yes. Give additional feedback in your role as the grammar expert based on students' needs. It is your role to gauge students' needs and be responsive to these needs in order to select which activity should be completed next. So looking at the student course book, you could either start and repeat the grammar at the start. Ideally, in the live online lesson, we want them to get producing the new language orally in free and more authentic practice tasks in pairs or small groups as much as we can. However, if there are any issues regarding meaning, form or pronunciation of the target language, you might want to walk your learners through exercise one to consolidate the video content. So depending on the understanding your learners show, it might be more interesting to move on and conduct some quick formative assessment of students' understanding by asking students to complete this control practice. If you feel they are pretty confident with the new target language by now, you might want to move on to exercise 5. Before moving on to task 6a, 
where learners can share and discuss their ideas in pairs using the target language in a more authentic way. The next task, 6b, is a good task to set as follow-up homework for learners to complete by themselves outside the classroom in preparation for the next lesson. Doing this outside the classroom gives learners an opportunity to think deeper and create a well-written detailed description of any locally well-known job, really, recycling some of the lectures they studied earlier in the unit. This could be an engaging warmer for your next lesson, where learners can work in groups and read out the descriptions whilst others are guessing which job they're talking about. So, the simplest way to define flipping is to think about it this way. What we used to set for homework, we now do in the classroom. Whereas what we used to do in the classroom, such as the clarification of language, our learners now study independently in their own time before the live online lesson. This leads to students having increased opportunities to use the new language actively with their peers in conversations or discussions, which fits in well with our communicative language teaching.